about it, how many horrible mistakes you feel like you've made with one glance of our eyes we captured his heart. The king of all kings loves you. He knows your name. He loves you. And he just can't help himself. And he's chasing after our hearts just like that young bridegroom in Tennessee was chasing after his bride. So, would you all please stand with me for a word of prayer? So, the title of the message that God laid on my heart to share with you all today is A Love That Pursues. And if I could have the subtitle, Yes, I can. Um, <laughs> it would be taste and see that the Lord is good. And, and I thought to myself, and I wish Deacon Peoples was here, I'm going to have to tell him. I, I said we could loosely paraphrase that by quoting our very own Deacon Peoples. If you don't know God, I dare you to try. All right, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the text, as I said before that we're going to be discussing today is from the book of Hosea and I want to warn you or inform you whichever word you would like to use that this is going to be a little bit different. I know that Pastor Henderson is adamant about calling this a sermon. I, I'd like to call it a talk. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you all today if that's all right. Um, <laughs> to you after. 
chapter today, I want you to know a little something about me. You see, I grew up as a daddy's girl, and I know a lot of women, girls think that they were, but I, I was a daddy's girl. I was the epitome of a daddy's girl. As far as I was concerned, my daddy hung the moon and the stars, and well, I was close, my heavenly daddy did, but you, you get my meaning. My daddy was, um, my daddy was my everything, and he was my best friend, he was my coach, he taught me how to fix cars. I know y'all don't believe that, but I can change oil, and a few other things I just choose to employ Jiffy Lube. Um, <laughs> we, we watched football together, and yelled at the television together, and he let me do things, even after my mama told me no. My daddy was my ace. And, um, and then Christmas break of my senior year in college, I woke up and he was gone. No, he wasn't dead. He just packed his stuff and left while we were asleep. And I was crushed. So <clears throat> I spent the next 10 years or so heartbroken and making some very poor decisions because of that brokenness. You see, my dad leaving sent me into a depression that words can't really express. And for a while, it literally left me in the bed not wanting to do anything. But then I got really good at smiling and pretending that everything was okay, even while I was crying inside. And so I went in search of a love that would never walk away from me. A love that would sprint after me and never let me go, no matter what mistakes I made. Your dad may not have walked out of your life. You may not have ever been married or divorced. You may not have experienced a breakup or a betrayal of any type. But we all have that same void inside of us all that we're looking to fill. You, you know that one, the one that yes, yes. we think we can fill with relationships, whether they're dating relationships or marriages, or even relationships with our children. Jesus. We try to fill that loneliness or that void with jobs and status, money, houses, clothes, or shoes. We think all of these types of things will make us happy, will bring us joy, will make us feel accepted or loved in someone else's eyes or maybe even in our own eyes. So when that one thing doesn't give us that feeling, or it does, but it wears off, because it always wears off, then we must need more of something, or a different something, or a different someone to complete us. We were having this conversation about the study the other night, and how nobody ever tells anybody everything, right? Because they might not like us anymore. They may not love us anymore. They may not want me to work for their company anymore or play on their team at that school. They may not want me to live in their neighborhood. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Amen. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Now, I, I in my heart, I, I get what that says, but I, I couldn't verbalize it well enough. So my study Bible says it better than I could. I scratched out the notes a thousand times. My, my study Bible says this. Listen to this. God has set eternity in people's hearts. This means that we can never be completely satisfied with earthly pleasures and pursuits. That's that word again. Because we are created in God's image. One, we have a spiritual thirst. We talked about thirst on Wednesday night. And we, we are thirsty. We're desperate. We're desperate for Jesus and we don't realize it. We have eternal value. And three, nothing but the eternal God can truly satisfy us. He has built in us a restless yearning, and we don't realize that that yearning is for him, not stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with stuff. There's nothing wrong with relationships. There's 
nothing wrong with shoes, but they won't bring you joy. They won't complete you, even though they might bring you temporary happiness. This brings me exactly to why I love the book of Hosea so much, to exactly why it changed my whole life. I want you to turn with me there, please, to, uh, to Hosea chapter 1. And it's, it's in the Old Testament. Keep flipping past the Psalms and Proverbs. Just not for Daniel. When I hear the pages get quiet, I'll, I'll know that you're there. But while you're turning, I just want to I just want to tell you a little bit about this story. So for those of you who haven't read this account before, I'm going to give you kind of an overview of the first three chapters of Hosea. But I want you to please mark it and read it for yourself tonight. First, let me tell you who Hosea is. The book of Hosea is named after a prophet. And in a nutshell, this is just a nutshell, uh, a prophet's job was to listen to God and then go and tell his people whatever it was that God said. But sometimes, God didn't just tell the prophets what to say. He told them to do something. And in doing whatever God told them, it was going to be a, a walking, talking, living, visual, visual representation to the people about God's character or his thoughts or emotions towards them. And we can use those accounts as a guide for us even now. There are many instances in the Bible where God told his prophets to do something that seemed very strange or maybe outright crazy to some of them and to some of us too. One example is most certainly documented in the life 